Assalamu alaikum. Today we're just going to focus on the interpretation of the Humphrey Visual Field printout. What is Humphrey Visual Field Analysis? It is a tool for measuring the human visual field, used particularly for testing monocular visual field. It identifies the type of vision defect and therefore the location of any disease process or lesions throughout the visual pathway. Guides and contributes to the diagnosis and monitors the progression of the patient condition. So here we know just about the type of the visual uh, vision defect, and the location, and the progression. But sometimes it's not possible to detect the possible diagnosis, just as there is a pathology, whereas the site of this pathology and the progression of this disease. But together with other investigations and with the clinical picture, we can have full idea about the diagnosis. The technique it is just a series of white light stimuli of varying intensities just from 0 0.08 apostel to 10,000. This just uh, stands uh, equivalent to uh, from 0 to 51 decibel. And preset size, usually the size used is Goldman size 3, as Dr. Mohammed said, uh, routinely about 4 millimeters square throughout a new firmly illuminated bowl. There is a background illumination of about 31.5 apostel. The patient uses a handheld button that they press to indicate when they see a light. What are the, uh, the available test strategies? Uh, the most commonly used strategies are super threshold, which is rapid. It's qualitative more than quantitative. It's used, therefore, for screening. The full threshold it is long, tiring, and multiple. Uh, but uh, here, the advantage is it, uh, it check the threshold multiple times. So it is more, uh, more uh, accuracy. There is more accuracy in detecting the threshold in each point. And, which is more common now, is the Swedish interactive central link algorithm. It is the fastest and the most accurate. Results are compared against an extensive normal and pathological age, ma age match database, which highlights unusual and suspicious visual, fee uh, visual field loss. CETA fast uh, versus CETA standard is just a quicker procedure, but it is less repeatable and less sensitive. About testing protocols, we have the central 24-2, which is most popular, measure 24 degrees temporally and 30 degrees nasally, with a total of 54 points. So it uh, concentrates more on the nasal field, and this is the part which is firstly affected in glaucoma. But uh, other defects like temporal sector is not evident in such protocol because it doesn't give a wide temporal field examination. It's used mainly for neuroophthalmic conditions, general screening, <coughs> and for early detection of glaucoma. Regarding the central 32, it measured 30 degrees temporally and nasally, with a total of 76 points. So this, these are more points to be examined, especially on the temporal side of the field. The indications are more or less the same as the 24 2. The central 10 2 protocol measures 10 degrees temporally and nasally, with a total of 68 points. So it highlights any central problem. So it's used mainly for macular, retinal, and neuroophthalmic conditions and advanced glaucoma. Full field examination, 120, measures the full 120 degree of the field, mainly for neurological defects. <coughs> and just want to, uh, to give a hint about the naming 24-2. Uh, just uh, there is 24-2 uh, means it's, uh, it's related to the pattern of the testing stimuli whether they are off the vertical and the horizontal median, uh, but the 24-1 or 30-1 means that they are along the vertical and horizontal median. Here just uh, a sample or just example of the 32 test protocol. This is example of the central 24-2 test protocol. And last one of the central 10-2. Uh, just you notice that there is no blind spot in the central 10 2 because the blind spot just uh, lies between 10 and 20 degrees, so it's not uh, present in the central 10 2 protocol. <coughs> How to interpret results? Uh, just to skip the part of the personal data fraction, as Dr. Mohammed highlighted this point, uh, and then just starting from the reliability indices. Reliability indices just reflect losing concentration, closing the eyes, or pressing the button too frequently. Uh, monitoring the fixation by Humphrey is used by the display screen and the gaze tracker. 
So uh, the examiner has some role in just detecting how, uh, how cooperative the patient or how, uh, uh, how the patient is uh, fixing and not only depending on the machine while, while using the uh, fixation losses or the gaze tracker alone. Fixation losses means when the patient responds to a stimulus that is projected onto the area of the blind spot. Fixation losses exceeding 20% are denoted with an XX next to the score and deems the result unreliable. So when it is less than 20%, this will give a reliable test, and more than 20%, the test will give a notation of lowest uh, liability. Here, we can see that the fixation losses are 5 out of 15, which is about a third, uh, third of the times. And here, we have the notation of lowest reliability. <coughs> the second reliability index is the false positives. When a patient responds when there is no stimulus present, which is bother happy or trigger happy patient, or when only a sound is heard with no stimulus. False positives exceeding 50% in CETA, uh, but in full, uh, in full threshold uh, or, or full threshold testing, it might be up to 33%, are denoted with an X, X, X again, and results are considered unreliable. The field appears abnormally pale, usually accompanied with high false fixation, or sorry, high fixation losses. So usually when there is high false positives, you can see, uh, again, full, uh, for, uh, high fixation losses. <coughs> in CETA testing, it depends on response time. Sometimes the test may give high fixation losses and high false, uh, sorry, high false positives. Depends on the rapid response of the patient. So it considers this more than average uh, response time or less than average response time. So this is considered as false positive. Uh, and this denotes that the patient is anxious and concerned about missing target. So uh, the patient is faster than uh, usual and this will be uh, presented as high false positive. Here we can see that the false positive is 19% and the test has the notation of excessive high false positives. The third reliability index is false negatives. When a patient doesn't respond to brighter stimuli, where a duller stimulus has already been seen. High false negative scores may be due to fatigue, inattentiveness, malinger, or genuine significant visual field loss. So it might not denote, as Dr. Mohammed said, uh, uh, unreliable test. Maybe there is advanced field loss, and this can give high false negative score. False negative exceeding approximately 15% in CETA, or 33% as a false positives, deem results unreliable. But again, we can accept higher false negatives in case of advanced field losses. Here is a test with 40, about 46% losses. Uh, uh, as you see here, there is no notation of low test reliability. As we said, we cannot tell this if we can see advanced field loss. Again, high false negatives sometimes can give the clover leaf field. Here you can see that there is a special pattern in the gray scale. Uh, it looks like a clover leaf because usually the test tests first the four, uh, four locations just in the four corners. And then the last points to be tested are the peripheral points and, uh, uh, and the nasal points. So sometimes we have this clover leaf when there is inattent uh, inattentiveness or fatigue of the patient at the end of the test. Here we can see that the false negative errors are 22%. And the field more or less is not highly affected. And this gives us an indication that it might be a reliable field. After we finish the reliability indices, we go to the displays. First, we have the numer uh, numerical display. It, re it represents the row values with measured or estimated of the patient retinal sensitivity at specific retinal points in decibel. Higher numbers equate to higher retinal sensitivity greatest in the central field and decrease towards the periphery. <coughs> Normal values are, uh, are approximately 30 decibel, while recorded values of less than the zero equate to no sensitivity measure. So less than zero means there is no, sens uh, no sensitivity of the retina in this point. Here, we just point to the numerical display. So this is the raw values of the patient retinal sensitivity. The second display is a gray skin. Grayscale is a graphical representation of the numerical display, allowing for easy interpretation of the field loss. Do not depend on this. 
but it's just important for demonstration to the patient. If you want to de demonstrate the feed loss or the progression to the patient, we can, we can use the grayscale. Lower sensitivities are indicated by darker areas and higher sensitivities are represented with a lighter tone. Each tone change is, is just about five decibel. As we said, it's used to, for demonstration and not for diagnosis. And here is the gray scale. The third display is the total deviation. It represents the difference between measured values and population age norm values at specific retinal points. Negative values indicate lower than normal sensitivity. Positive values indicate higher, zero equals no change. The total deviation plots highlight diffuse vision loss. Uh, the, uh, the fourth display is the pattern deviation. It accounts for general reduction of vision. So it subtracts the, uh, the general reduction due to media opacities or uncorrected refractive error or age or pupil malosis or whatsoever. And it gives us just the focal loss. Therefore generally, lighter, uh, therefore, generally lighter than the total deviation. It is more diagnostic as it highlights any focal or any, uh, any localized loss. Here we can see the total deviation to the left and the pattern deviation to the right. The last thing is the probability displays. The statistical displays located below the numerical total and the pattern deviation display. A graphical demonstration of the percentage of the normal population who measures below the patient's value at a specific retinal point from less than 5% to less than 0.5%. The dark square in the key represents that less than half percent of the population would also attain these results, indicating that the vision loss is extensive. So the, the less the number, less than 0.5, this means the more the probability of this point to be deceased. Here we can see the probability indices. As you see, the darkest square, less than 0.5%, means less than 0.5% probability of these to be normal. So higher probability to be abnormal. The glaucoma heavy field test, it compares five corresponding and mirrored areas in the superior and inferior visual field, and it assess the general sensitivity. The results of either outside normal limits, this means significant difference in superior and inferior fields, or borderline, which is suspicious difference, or within normal limits, no difference, is only considered when the patient has or is a suspect for glaucoma. So this is test is specific for glaucoma. We do not depend on it when we have just centered glaucoma or any other field effect for any other cause. Only available in 32 and 24 an, uh, analysis protocol. It's not present in the central 10 tool. The visual field index reflects retinal ganglion cell loss and function. So it is a general term as a percentage with central points weighted more. General term, we do not rely on it uh, frequently. We call a hemifield test. Here we can see it. And here in these tests, it's just uh, denoted that it is borderline. The visual field index here, again, is presented. Um, the next thing is the global indices. Global indices, statistical summary of the field in a single number, used principally for monitoring the progression of damage rather than initial diagnosis. So when we see the mean deviation or the better standard deviation, these are important mainly for progression rather than diagnosis. The mean deviation derived from the total deviation represents the overall mean departure from the age corrected norm. A negative value equals field loss, while a positive value represents above average field. A p value is provided if the global indices are abnormal. p means probability value. So probability less than 2% means less than 2% of the normal population have vision loss worse than measured. So again, the lower the number means the higher possibility of abnormality. Pattern standard deviation derived from the pattern deviation and thus highlights focal loss only, taking into account any generalized depression, subtracting any generalized depression, and concentrating on focal loss, a more useful indication of glaucomatous progression than mean deviation. Uh, the third global index is the short-term fluctuation. It's not present in Humphrey. It indicates the consistency of response during a single test, intra-test variability. So it depends on variable measure or uh, more than once measurement of the threshold. 
But in case of C to standard here, we just measure the stratum once, so there is no short-term fluctuation. Poor concentration, uh, poor concentration and tiredness can affect the short-term fluctuation, can increase the uh, short-term fluctuation. Again, aging and glaucoma themselves can increase the short-term fluctuation. Corrected better standard deviation means better standard deviation corrected for the short-term fluctuation. They are not presented in theta as the threshold is tested once, as we said. Here we can see the mean deviation and the pattern standard deviation and the probability number written beside them if they are abnormal. They are abnormal when they are more than two. So less than minus two, this means this is within the normal range. But above minus two, this is abnormal. Advantages and disadvantages of the Humphrey field analyzer is a comprehensive visual field assessment and reliable results, compares patient data to age matched population, provides baseline measurement, Distinguishes focal from diffuse vision loss, can be used for patients who are wheelchair users, hearing a bird. It's somewhat it's not easy to use it with such patients, but it is easier than the other parameters. It is simple to perform and interpret. This advantage, it requires a higher level of patient understanding and concentration, it is relatively time consuming. Learning effect, new patients improve as more tests are performed due to understanding of the test condition. That's why we just consider the second or even the third test as a baseline test. Potentials for artifacts, uncharacteristic vision loss, when we see that the focal loss or the, the scotoma or the pattern of the field effect is not going with any of the well-known pattern of spatial pathology, like uncorrected refractive error, apachia, rim of trial frame, media opacities and cranticona, stosis and meiosis, here we can see just an example of the rim artifact. When we see that the field defect is just more of a mirror image between the upper and lower field, this is not going for glaucoma, as glaucoma usually respects the horizontal meridian. We cannot find that the defect is typically the same between the upper and lower field. Example of glaucoma field defect, here we can see an upper nasal step. Another is an uh, example we can see here, suspicious upper arcuate scotoma. Here we can see upper altitudinal field effect. When the, when the total upper half of the field is affected, this might be associated with anterior ischemic optic neuropathy or with advanced glaucoma. <coughs> Advanced field defect, we uh, we just prefer here to use the central 10 tool because it it will help us more in uh, in the follow up and uh, detecting any progression of the patient because the central 30 or 24 tool will, will not give us too much data about the central field. Medium opacities here can cause either one of two. Here in the first example, we can see general reduction of sensitivity and in the pattern deviation, there is the field is more or less normal, and here we can see that the glaucoma heavy field test shows a general reduction of sensitivity. Or there, there might be a localized opacity uh, as a central corneal opacity or central cataract. Here, the general uh, the mean deviation and the pattern standard deviation are uh, more or less the same, and the displays are more or less the same. There are no much difference between them. Neurological field abnormalities. Here we should have some uh, history of the patient to suspect any neurological condition, uh, or the doctor might refer the patient just is suspecting uh, cerebral muscular stroke or something like this. Here we can see that the right lower quadrant is mostly affected in both eyes. So this example of right lower quadrant anopia, it is incongruous, it's more affecting the right eye than the left eye. So this is highly suspicious of neurological defects. Uh, consult a neurologist. Here we can see, although the right field is highly or advancedly affected, but the gray scale shows more or less more affection to the temporal side. This is why temporal hemianopia it is more advanced on the right side, but it is highly suspicious of other neurological defect. Thank you.